The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 4. Then Jesus, filled with the power of the Spirit, returned to Galilee, and a report about him spread through all the surrounding country. He began to teach in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. When he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to them. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of the sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of all the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to say to them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So today we read about Jesus who stands up in front of his congregation in his hometown to proclaim the gospel truth to everyone sitting there. The truth that God has come down to the earth to be with them. And this seems so wonderful to us because we know the end of the story. We know who Jesus is and why he came into the world. We know that Jesus wants to show us God's love. That Jesus wants to bring light into darkness, life into death. And Jesus' life and his ministry changed the world forever. But when he starts his ministry in his hometown, he gives a sermon to the people gathered there. And right at the beginning of the verse, we read that he is filled with the power of the Holy Spirit as he begins his public ministry. But the people who were gathered there that morning do not have the same understanding of God that Jesus has. You know, when they thought of God, they pictured God up in heaven. And if you were faithful to God, if you were loved, by God, then you would live a good life. But Jesus changes everything this day. He reads from the prophet Isaiah, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. This is not something that they were expecting. Jesus says he sent me to proclaim release to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free. And he said, today the scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. I think what Jesus does, or what he begins to do, is to change the view of who God is for the people who were gathered there that day. At first they seem to understand what Jesus is saying, and they may even agree with him. But as his ministry continues, they see what it means to bring sight to the blind. <clears throat> Release to the oppressed, good news to the poor. You know, this past year we have been talking about the question, what is the church? And the four leadership team has helped us explore this question. We started with this question because our history is comprised of churches that are not Faith Lutheran Church. We were Emmanuel and Bethel and Covenant and First. So what does it mean to be Faith Lutheran Church? We explored and we've had lots of great ideas and conversations and maybe even come out with a little bit of direction. But as I was reading the gospel lesson for today, as I was thinking about this past year, as I prepare for our annual meeting, there, another question kept bugging me. You know, we might be able to articulate a little bit about what we believe the church is, but can we speak with the same conviction and passion about our God? What is our image of who God is? You know, yesterday at confirmation camp, 
I was talking with the students at, at Calumet and we were talking about parables and the kingdom of God and what is the kingdom of God. And one of the exercises that I had them do was write their own metaphor, their own parable about the kingdom of God. And here were the images that they came up with. The kingdom of God is a kid in a candy store. You experience the kingdom of God and the joy that you feel is overwhelming. The kingdom of God is chocolate. It comforts you and it tastes delicious. The kingdom of God is a rose. It's beautiful, but it might hurt. The kingdom of God is a library because it's a place where anyone can go. And we receive our library cards through our baptism. You know, as a group, we started to think about and explore who God is and what it looks like to be connected to God and God's kingdom. You know, it's so important that we have an idea of who God is as individuals, but also as a congregation. And this is important because there are things that are happening in our life and in our world that completely overwhelm us. There are people who we desperately love who are struggling. There, there are folks who are not happy with their current job situation. We may have our own health concerns that we are worried about, and we see around our community and around the world where there is discord instead of unity. Many times we want to see God intervene, but it doesn't happen in the way that we like, and sometimes it might even feel like it doesn't happen at all. We need God to heal our family. We need God to help us make ends meet so we can survive. We need God to show up. And then we may hear from a neighbor or a friend, and they say, well, you know what? I was you know, praying to God that I would have find the sale of my favorite laundry detergent. And you know what? God answered my prayer. Hallelujah. We say to ourselves, God, where are you? Why were you with that person answering their prayer and not with the people who really, truly need you? To have a God who is with us, who calls us to be with the blind, the oppressed, the poor, is a God who is there when things are not going our way at all. It's the same God who is with us when we desperately need God. Because when we see a hurt or an injustice in our lives or in the world around us, we have, we have two choices. To turn a blind eye or use the gifts that God has blessed us with to help and make a difference. What we do in the world, what we do when we experience injustice, helps form a picture of who God is. So when we gather together as a community, when we talk about our passions, the things that move us, the things that bring us joy and happiness, when we begin to form as a community our image of God, we begin to see the world and our lives in a new way. And this is what Jesus is bringing into the world. Jesus helps us see that because God loves us, our lives are going to be different. The world is going to change. No longer does God reside up in heaven looking down upon us. Instead of us reaching out to God, calling on God's name in hopes that God will come into our lives, Jesus says God is here now. That God sees us and loves us. That God looks with favor upon us. And because of that, our world is never going to be the same again. And I know that there are times when we feel like we are the poor or the oppressed, when we feel discarded and discriminated against, when we feel rejected. And during those times, someone is out there telling us, well, all you need is to have a positive outlook on life. All you need is just to pray a little bit more, a little harder. All you need is to go to church more. And things are going to get better. We don't need to hear that. 
We need to take opportunities to slow down and to focus on our relationships, our relationship with God and the people that are connected to us, and say, how do those relationships, those relationships with God, those relationships with the church, with my family, my friends, how do those relationships make a difference in my life? I know for me, when I'm at my weakest, when I need strength, when I need someone or something to help me just put one foot in front of another, it is then that I'm thankful for my relationship with God. It is then that I am thankful for my relationship with this church, because it is in this place that I experience the promises of God, the promise of, of hope and grace and salvation and new life. But I need someone to pick me up. I have all of you. I have you who, who embrace me when I'm feeling down. I have you who remind me that God is there when I can't see God through life's tragedies. I have you who help me gather around the cross and experience God's presence in a physical way in the bread and the wine, the body and blood of Christ. I have you to help remind me that no matter what happens in my life, that the promises of God are real and are present all around me. We hear all of this in Jesus' first sermon. We hear that God is present with us. We hear that what God wants for us is that we know the truth. And when we know the truth, we are set free to live the life that God wants us to live. To see all the things that are possible for us. We don't have to imagine it. All we have to do is embrace it. And when we embrace it, we will start to see our image of God. And we might start out by not really sure what that looks like or how that's going to affect our lives. But the promise of God is when we need God most, God is present in our lives through our relationships with one another, through our relationship in the church, our connection to the sacraments of baptism and communion. And God continues to come to make God's self known in all the world so we can experience the, the promise of hope, love, and grace in our life. Amen. Oh,